In this chapter, we will see how sustainable development needs to take into account the attitudes of people, and we will see how this can be done on a governmental level as well as a non-governmental level. And the most effective way to take attitudes into account and in different worldviews and values is through participation. Participation can have very, very different levels. So the easiest one and the most basic one is just a one-way communication. Participating people by telling them facts. And it can gradually increase towards participation, which includes a lot of different stakeholders into a decision-making process. To illustrate what I'm talking about, I have chosen some examples. And the first example comes from European fisheries, where five years ago, celebrity chefs have actually engaged a campaign for the public, making them aware of discards that are taking place in European fisheries. That campaign was very much one-way driven communication at the beginning. It engaged more and more people and they started discussion. And actually, this campaign, after three years, led to an enactment of a discard ban in the European fisheries. So you see that this even one-way communication could be a very huge influence on policy making. So this was a European-wide example. When we look at a more local scale, we have a campaign which is called We Love Our Fishermen, which is uh, taking place in Sitka, Alaska, the USA. This program should ensure that school children for, get seafood for their daily diet. And they're relying on donations from local fishermen. At the same time, inviting those fishermen to tell the kids stories about their daily life, showing them how they fish. And through this program, kids learn about the ocean environment, how important it is to have sustainable fisheries. And they also learn about traditions and cultural heritage of the area. The third example is again a more local example, and it's about a Colectivo de Memorias do Mar, which is a Brazilian initiative, which is traveling along the Brazilian coast, engaging in small villages with people living there, the communities, bringing different actors together. So fishermen, NGOs, as well as citizens, kids, but also artists and musicians to raise awareness about issues in the sea and at the sea and to try to stimulate communication between these actors to come up with a more sustainable way of using our oceans. A very specific way of participation leads to self-management of communities. And for this I take an example of three fishing villages in Mexico in the northern Gulf of California. There was a study looking at these three villages. And these three villages have communities which are engaged in small-scale fisheries on the sea pan shell. And it was seen that two of these communities have actually enacted a system of common property rights, which led to sustainable use of the resource, whereas one village never implemented that, and actually the resource is over-harvested and the fisheries is in decline. So the question is, what factors are actually influencing this? So the first factor is that we need clearly defined boundaries. So communities need to be small enough to be socially coherent, and that external actors cannot operate in the sphere. And they need to have rules regarding the use and provision of, commons, common, of the common resource, which are adapted to this social condition that they have. And these arrangements and rules have to be implemented and developed by those who are living in the, in the communities. And also the monitoring of the compliance need to be done by people from the communities. So you need an easy set of rules, but also a graduate scale of sanctions for uh, the resources users who are actually violating this, these rules. But you also need acceptance of this through the overarching governmental system. And you need a common pool resource which is at a local and small scale. And if you have a larger scale common pool resource, then you need to separate that into smaller parts so that this uh, system can actually work. So in this chapter we have seen that there are campaigns and engagement with people in local communities as well as on larger scale that are influencing the management as well as policy development. And that these means of engagement with the stakeholders and larger society and the society at large are actually important to take all the attitudes and views into account when coming up with a sustainable development for our oceans.